It's a question we never seem to stop hearing. Can women have it all? Deborah Spar, the president of Barnard College, says the answer is no. And in her new book, Wonder Women, Sex, Power, and the Quest for Perfection, she says it's time to redefine expectations for new generations of women and men. President Spar, welcome. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Now, President Spar, who are the Wonder Women that you write about? Well, well, the argument of the book is that there really are no real Wonder Women. Mm -hmm. That that Wonder Woman is a myth. I mean, both the cartoon figure, but but more importantly, the the Wonder Women refers to this myth that women can have it all, do it all, be good at everything. And what I'm arguing is that that myth has to be recognized as a myth because no woman on the planet, no man on the planet. Um, can do everything, much less do everything well. But you say who's responsible. In the book, you, you name names. Madison Avenue, of course, but also your mother. My, my, yes, and I don't mean to pick on my particular mother, <laughs> but, but our generation of mothers, because women my age had mothers who couldn't, or my, it was much harder for them to be professionals. So I think our generation of mothers said, you know, I couldn't be a lawyer, but you can. I couldn't be a doctor, but you can. But quietly, they were saying, and we were hearing, but you should still be a good mother, a good, you know, good wife, and all those other more traditional things. Now, you say you want to advocate for a revised and somewhat reluctant feminism. First of all, why reluctant, and what does that feminism look like? Well, you know, the, the, the reluctant feminism comes from the fact that we should have been at the point where we didn't need feminism anymore. You know, 50 years since the real onset of the feminist movement, you might have thought that women would have achieved full equality, full equal rights, and we haven't. So the reluctant is just, you know, I wish we were past this point. But I'm arguing very strongly that, that women of my generation, younger women, my students at Barnard, need to go back to the original goals of feminism and really focus on the collective goals, the societal goals, the political goals, and give up on what, what I think we've taken much of feminism to mean, which is this personal pursuit of perfection. That's the mistake. And the women at Barnard, did they share your... your, your delusions about what feminism is supposed to be, or have they transcended it? Well, I think when I, when I look at my students, and generally young women of this generation, they're a great generation. They're an idealistic generation. They're a realistic generation. But they're also exhausted. You know, and I think all too often now, by the time kids reach college, particularly at the, you know, the elite colleges, they're just tired. They've been getting straight A's in, in high school. They also feel like they have to be very competitive athletes. Um, they feel like they have to be saving the world already and being leaders already, and they're not even 18. Mm -hmm. So I think this generation of, of girls and boys, but particularly girls, is really suffering under what I call in this book this, this double or triple whammy of great expectations, mm -hmm. the expectations that they have to be and do everything, and that's a problem. And as you write in your book, you come from uh, upper middle class, obviously white, um, educated home. Mm -hmm. Does this revised, uh, and what you also call soft and gentler mm -hmm. feminism, do they address the problems of poor and working class American women? Yes and no. You know, I think there are many, many different forms of feminism, and there are many different issues that women face. And, you know, to be honest, the issues that I face and women like myself face pale in comparison to the issues that poor women, um, single moms, you know, they face a much greater set of, set of problems. But I, what I think does cut across all women today, sadly, is this issue of expectations. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, even, you know, women of color, poor women, they too face these same expectations of, of being good, of being perfect, mm -hmm. of taking care of their kids, taking care of their families, looking good all the time, looking sexy all the mm -hmm. time. These are expectations that cut across Mm -hmm. class and race. Uh, are you suggesting that we settle or that women settle for second best, not for the best, not for the excellent? I'm not, I'm not even coming close to arguing that women should settle for second best. What I'm saying is that women, like men, should choose what they want to be great at. None of us are good at everything. Mm -hmm. So if what you really, really want to be is an astrophysicist, you probably can't also be president of the PTA. Mm -hmm. And what you really, if what you really want to be is active in your kids' communities and president of the PTA, then don't beat yourself up for not being an astrophysicist. That's what I'm arguing. And what's the role of men in this new revised, softer, gentler feminism? Well, you know, I think we are at a point now societally where men want to see women succeed. 
a men, in my experience, desperately want their daughters to succeed. They want their wives to succeed. They want their sisters to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think what women have to do is to make it easier for men to enter the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, men don't want to talk about feminism. Men don't want to, you know, they, they feel like they don't have a right to participate in these conversations. And yet they still hold 85% of the seats of power in this country. So if we want to solve the problems, women have to make men part of the solution. Do you see your presidency at Barnard as a platform so for you to advocate or explain what feminism really should be? Yeah, and you know, I, don't, I personally can't claim to speak for all feminists, but Barnard clearly is a place that has always been part of the feminist movement. We're one of the best schools in the world for young women. So anything I can do to sort of advance the cause, I think very much comes with the, with the job I hold. Well, President Spar, thank you so much. Pleasure, thank you.